Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Today, I got a really cool video for you on how to marry two of the most popular Apache projects, uh, Airflow and Kafka. So what we'll be doing here is creating a DAG that's going to monitor a Kafka stream for a certain message. And then once that message occurs, once that value appears, then trigger a downstream action. So this is a great tool if you want to monitor a Kafka stream and you know that certain state changes will populate within it that you want to then trigger downstream effects. Um, so it's exactly what we'll be doing here. Uh, so to actually get started doing this, um, just to hit some package you'll need to import is the classic DAG decorator, pendulum date time for using date time within Airflow, uh, your Kafka sensors to await message trigger function. So this is how we'll actually be monitoring for that particular message. Trigger DAG run to actually trigger a DAG run after. Um, and then we have just have JSON and UUID just to deal with some of the data types that we'll be using. And that's all we really need to get set up. So now we can start writing the actual DAG. So in this example, what we'll be doing is basically monitoring this Kafka topic, my topic, for if Zoomy or Bouncy appears. So if either of these pet moods appear, then the pet needs a walk. Um, so silly example, but you can extend this DAG and these practices to your own much more business oriented use cases. Um, so after we've set the desired messages that we want to look for and our Kafka topic, we're all set to actually start defining the functions to listen for these. So the first function we're going to want to define is the listen function. And this is going to be just reading an input of the messages and checking if the pet is in the mood, zoomy or bouncy. Um, so here we're taking the value uh, message and pet moods needing a walk as two state changes. So checking if the message is corresponding to one of the moods that needs a walk. So here we're taking the message content and I'll show you how we're getting this message later, reading it as a JSON, then printing the full message, printing the pet name, pet mood, pet treat, uh, and then saying some if value statements to check that if a pet is in need of a walk, then we're going to give them a post treat. Um, so this is basically just the logic that is determining that do we need to actually perform our downstream action or is it fine and we can just keep on going? So if it's not zoomy or bouncy, then we actually don't need to return these values, i.e. this is the message. So if you don't receive the message within this content, then no worries, we don't need to trigger any downstream actions. So a lot of the times, if the message doesn't appear, this whole DAG just ends up not returning anything. Um, but if it does, then it does return our pet mood and our pet name. So if zoomy or bouncy here. So now that we've gotten the mechanism for actually just reading that Kafka topic message, now let's define that downstream trigger. So now our downstream trigger, and this is the part where you'd bring in your own uh, string of events that you want to be triggered, uh, is we have our events triggered function. So this is taking that message, the context passed from this previous function, uh, and then giving our pet name, which is just the zero. So when we parsed the pet message, this is taking out the pet name, uh, the pet mood post treat, which are both returned from here and passed via context. Then it's printing, hey, because it's in the X state, a walk is being initiated. So then what this is going to do is trigger that downstream DAG that's actually going to walk the dog. So this is where you would take, hey, whatever trigger, whatever DAG run, whatever pipeline you want to trigger upon this message being received, this is where that's actually happening. So you'll notice this is a trigger DAG run operator nested within a larger function um, because why not? We love nested functions. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, this is because this isn't always going to be run. This is only run when this event is triggered. So that's why we aren't making it into the full DAG because otherwise it's just going to get hung on that task if the tr of triggering the DAG run, if it's not actually going to happen. Um, so here triggering that downstream run, and then it's just giving us a quick print message uh, that's just saying, hey, someone out of walk. Um, just kind of fun, silly stuff. So now that we've got our functions all set, let's define it as a DAG and we're off to the races. So now we have a very simple DAG here, which is just saying continuous. So this is using that new continuous scheduling where this DAG is gonna be constantly running, constantly checking for that Kafka message to appear. Um, max active runs one, so we just don't jam up the schedule with a bunch of runs of this DAG. Uh, and then we have listening to the stream. So here, just have that await message trigger function sensor, so the one we imported earlier, that is waiting for that particular message. 
Um, so here we have the apply function. So this is why we define this as a function, not as a task, is because we're actually passing it as a parameter to our await message trigger function. So what this is doing is saying, hey, listen to this stream, and then use the listen function to actually apply some message or parse that message and then apply some downstream actions. So here, this is why it's in a dot notation stream. So we have listening to the stream dot listen function. Um, and that's just because that's how Kafka works. You got to pass it like that. Um, so that's why it is a little bit funny here. Um, and then we have our pa Kafka topic, which we're packing, passing here. Kafka config ID, list just a normal task ID, uh, poll interval. So this is how often you want to check that stream or that topic for messages um, and then apply functions. So this is where we're passing in those pet moods that we're listening for. So this is where you're putting the messages that you want to listen for using this function. So it's passing these messages and then using this listen function to actually parse the message for these particular messages. So I know I'm saying message a lot. Unfortunately, there's no other word for it. Um, and then you have your event triggered function, which is the function then that will be triggered when it detects one of those messages. So that's what we have here. So that's, again, why we have this trigger dag run nested within a function, because these functions are both passed into an await message trigger function sensor that's listening to that Kafka stream. Um, so it's a really simple one task DAG, but there's a lot that goes into that one task. Um, and then once you've gotten all that set up, you only thing left to do by undelete that parentheses is define the DAG as listen to stream and you're all set. Uh, I would show this in the UI, but I think we all know that there is no points to that. It is just going to show as one uh, parentless childless node. Um, but that one node is going to be doing a lot. So once you set it to active, it'll run continuously, continuously monitor that Kafka stream for whenever the message is going to appear. And then whatever function you define to be kicked off once the message does appear will start getting kicked off. Um, so really simple DAG, but really powerful one. And I hope it makes your life a little bit easier. Uh, that's what the data guy is here for. So I hope you learned something. Uh, if you want the DAG code, it will be all available in the link in the description. Um, and you can go get started using this yourself, customize it, go crazy, comment if you come up with someone crazy. And have a good one, y'all. Data guy out.